Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. I remember going to the pavilion at Myrtle Beach when I was a child. My brother and sister and I were always fascinated by the mirrors that were there. One made us look eight feet tall and as thin as a rail. Another one shrunk us to about a foot and a half tall and twice that wide. It was always fun to see these distorted images of ourselves. This week we are talking about God's amazing grace and using some quotes from Philip Yancey's book, What's So Amazing About Grace, to guide our thoughts. The ones I have chosen for today in some way hold up a mirror so that we can see ourselves. And unfortunately, all too often what we encounter is a distorted image. We see who we really are, and we know our need for grace. The first quote from Yancey says, What does the world learn about God by watching us, his followers on earth? Ouch. I bet it isn't hard for each of us to think of times when we haven't lived up to who we should be as God's child. I bet it isn't hard for us, for each of us, to consider times when we haven't embodied love for someone else, especially for someone we don't like, or who lives with a behavior we don't like, or who is different from us. And the ironic thing is that God might not like us so much when we feel and act that way toward others. In those times, we're acting very differently than who God is. Yet still, God loves us. Still, God has grace. Now, we are supposed to be talking about grace, but where we are at this point could certainly lead to a toe-stomping toe sermon about living as an example to others. Evangelist Dwight L. Moody said, Of 100 men, one will read the Bible, the 99 will read the Christian. And while that's a valid point, we need to ask, where is the grace here? Well, I think grace shows up when we realize that we aren't perfect people, and we are just in just we are in just as much need of grace as the worst person among us. We each need grace the same as the worst example of Christian living. And so we are called to live in grace for one another, always, in everything. And the ironic, the second ironic thing is that as we do, as we live in unconditional love and compassion for one another, we become the very thing God would have the world read in us. Then Yancey asks a related but different question. Sociologists have a theory of the looking glass self. You become what the most important person in your life, your wife, your father, your boss, etc., you become what they think you are. How would my life change if I truly believed the Bible's astounding words about God's love for me, if I looked in the mirror and saw what God sees? Now, it would be easy for us to consider that when God looks at us, God sees all the flaws and all the ways we don't measure up to whom we should be. There's plenty of sermons out there like that, and I may have preached a few myself. But thoughts like that don't consider that grace is involved. You see, when God looks at us, God looks through lenses of love. How does it change things? How does it change you to see yourself as a loved, adored, precious child of God? That's what God sees. How does that make a difference in how you see yourself? Similarly, in another place, Yancey asks, What would it mean, I ask myself, if I too came to the place where I saw my primary identity in life as the one Jesus loves? 
How differently would I view myself at the end of a day? That is who you are. Now and forever, you are the one Jesus died for. Now and forever, you are the one Jesus loves. Finally, for today, Yancey reflects on our universal need for grace and how we can't live in false pretenses anymore. He writes, I get mailings from Amnesty International, and as I look at their photos of men and women who have been beaten and cattle prodded and jabbed and spit on and electrocuted, I ask myself, what kind of human being could do that to another human being? Then I read the book of Acts, and I meet the kind of person who could do such a thing. Now an apostle of grace, a servant of Jesus Christ, the greatest missionary history has ever known. If God can love that kind of person, maybe, just maybe, God can love the likes of me. God's is an amazing grace indeed. Thanks for watching and remember to let this day belong to God.